waiting room. And the reason I'm here is I wanted to show you the beautiful new uh, designs that we've got on the walls which are helping patients understand how they can choose appropriately the right place to receive their emergency care. The one behind me is talking about what you can do about chest pains and bleeding. And there are others which I know that through the podcast you will be able to see. This is something that has been externally funded to the Trust through NHS monies for winter to help people make the right choices about where they can best receive their care. So it's something that uh, our staff in Accent Emergency really welcome and I hope our patients find helpful. Accident and emergency services have clearly been a major feature for the start of 2015 where we've seen very high numbers of frail elderly patients, often with respiratory conditions, coming to accident and emergency and then needing admission into the hospital. This has then given us a problem with discharging these patients once they are fit to go home. Um, and what happens when you fail to discharge enough people is that there's a blockage through the system and those people who are in need of our care in accident and emergency and then need admission find there is not a bed immediately available for them. Unfortunately, that will often mean a lengthy wait and that's something that I must apologise for if it has affected you or any members of your family. In terms of how we've coped with this, we've actually brought in additional nursing staff, um, additional wards have been opened, and one of the main things that we've done is to actually engage with our social care uh, partners to help ensure that the patients who we do have are appropriately discharged. Often because they're frail and elderly, it might be to some care home setting rather than their own domestic home. And I want to thank both social care and our own staff for working at these unprecedented levels because of the huge problems that we've had um, in terms of admissions of patients to the hospital. Uh, those patients, because of their frailty, are often very vulnerable, have unfortunately had many times to spend longer number of days in the hospital than you would normally hope for and therefore their discharge is a really important factor. This is something as a health and social care economy we're working on to make sure we learn the lessons from what worked well and what perhaps could have been done even better over the last few weeks to ensure that in the future we have a fit for purpose system. But finally, just thank you again to our staff and to the social care staff for helping us in these difficult times. And in terms of a subject that I have spoken about previously, we of course have the trial of nurse Victorina Chua, who um, of course um, is on trial for issues around the saline incident. Um, I think it's really important that everybody remembers the hospital indeed is not on trial. And what we've been trying to do is support uh, the investigation and the police in that. Uh, we've got a number of our staff obviously involved in being witnesses during the trial and uh, we're doing everything we can to support them. Um, but our hearts continue to be very much with the patients and the families um, of those patients who were affected in some way. This has been going on for three and a half years and it's not something we forget and those patients and their families are forever in our thoughts. Um, so we're hoping that this will eventually come to a conclusion that can help everybody uh, move forward on this. In terms of that partnership working, we are part of a bigger partnership along with our CCG, Clinical Commissioning Group, colleagues in Stockport. We've got representatives from the Clinical Commissioning Group in Derbyshire. And we've also got Pennine Care, the mental health provider of services in the area. Together with the local authority, we're working on a single strategic plan that should ensure that services going over the next five years become completely joined up in terms of the care that we offer. We're focusing on four main programmes of work and this is uh, an important order 
wherever possible we want to do work on the preventive side. That would stop people getting ill in the first place. What we then want to do is look at work on the proactive side. For those patients who unfortunately perhaps already have some kind of long-term condition, what we want to do is jointly be able to work with them to support them to care for themselves, if at all possible, in their homes. And that then avoids them becoming so ill they need some form of perhaps hospital care. Thirdly, we want to work on something called urgent care which is for those patients who perhaps have some kind of accident, but also those patients who have a long-term condition, but who haven't been able to manage their care and become acutely ill. And what we want to do all the way through is, um, wherever possible, have more patients in the preventive category and fewer patients needing urgent care. And then the final group of patients are those that we call needing planned care. And those are often some kind of operation, for example, it might be a knee operation or a hand operation or some kind of uh, a stomach operation because they've got a condition that requires a planned or elective treatment. Now we believe that by working together as four organisations, we can ensure that the significant monies that we actually have as a health and social care economy, well over £400 million a year, can be used most effectively. But it is about doing things differently to actually provide that efficient and effective care across all organisations for the people of Stockport. And for those of you who are perhaps visiting our wards, you may notice staff in a brand new uniform. It's a bright red uniform, uh, very fetching, um, and it is for the most senior nurses on each of the ward who manage the ward. Uh, so it might be the senior ward sister or the senior ward charge nurse. Um, there's about 55 of them across the trust in charge of every one of the wards that we have and the reason they're in red is they should be easily identifiable in case you need to raise an issue regarding care or any other issues on the ward. And finally some excellent news. Uh, one of our volunteers who's been here for over 35 years as a volunteer, Bill McKenna, has been recognised and awarded the British Empire Medal for his services as a volunteer. Uh, Bill not only works tirelessly within the hospital, but he also travels all the way from North Wales to do so on a weekly basis. Um, thank you to Bill, and it's great that finally uh, we've got not just our recognition of what he's doing, but a higher recognition. Well done, Bill.